Hello, welcome to the Thursday, January 3rd, 2019 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Last week I asked for a sample of CEO scams and credit card scams. Well, uh, we got a number of great submissions and Lorna today published uh, one case that I think in, is in particular telling as to what lengths these attackers go through in order to actually lure their victims into buying them gift cards. So first of all, the attackers appear to be doing at least some manual reconnaissance here. These emails are typically not sent to everybody in the company, but only to a couple of individuals. Now, in the case that Lorna picked, the individual that received the email was actually a fairly new employee. So there's one question as to how the attacker actually got this employee's email address. And then, of course, the sender of the email claimed to be the company's CEO. Throughout the entire exchange of several emails, the attacker kept replying rather quickly with customized responses. This doesn't look like anything. This was scripted. The entire exchange lasted about five hours until the victim cut it off. These attacks have become very popular in particular around holidays, but we have also seen them sometimes used after disasters. For example, I think I mentioned it after the California wildfires, where some companies have seen requests like this that claim to come from, for example, again, high ranking officials in the company to, for example, help out victims of these wildfires who also happen to be customers of the company. So the real question, of course, is how do we defend against these kind of attacks? And well, there isn't sort of a simple fits all solution for this. Education, of course, helps somewhat. Also some business logic controls around spending money for gift cards can help. Now, I was talking to a friend earlier today and he suggested an interesting email filter that he says worked well for his very large company. And that's where you are looking out for an email that appears to come from someone that uses a name of a company executive but does not use the company email domain. So in the example for Sans, this would be any email coming from someone called Johannes Ulrich that uses an email address that's not at sans.org or at sans.edu. I think that's an interesting filter that uh, may be worthwhile considering, of course, if uh, some of your executives have very common names like the famous Robert Smith or such, then this may be more tricky and more difficult to implement. But let's move on to a more technical exploit. Dennis Selyanin made a public presentation that he presented at the Serenites conference in November. The interesting part here is that this is actually an overflow in a Wi-Fi chipset. The particular chipset that Dennis analyzed was the Marvel Avastar Wi-Fi chipset. And it's a quite popular chipset. Microsoft's Surface and Surface Pro Surface Laptop, for example, includes it. Also PlayStation 4, Samsung Chromebooks, and a number of other laptops and devices are including this particular chipset. Now, it's really more than just Wi-Fi. It's a little system on a chip, so it does quite a bit, but the firmware for the chipset is actually loaded as the system boots. So the operating system is kind of responsible for loading the firmware and this also allowed Dennis here to reverse analyze the firmware easier even though this wasn't an easy undertaking by any means. He's going through some of the complications in analyzing this rather complex software. Well, uh, due to fussing, he was able to find a number of flaws in this firmware and has actually exploited one of them. The dangerous part about this vulnerability is that it is exploited as the client is just searching and looking for networks. So you don't have to actually associate with a particular access point. You don't have to log in anywhere. This is something that can happen without any real user interaction. 
The presentation goes into quite a bit of detail in how all of this is accomplished and also how the bug is then exploited to totally take over the system that uses this particular Wi-Fi card. I haven't found the actual exploit code anywhere. There is a demo that is part of the presentation, but the vulnerability I don't think has been fixed yet, even though it has been reported to the vendor. So your only defense here is really to disable the Wi-Fi card if you are in an environment where you suspect that you may be exposed to a malicious access point, which, well, is more or less anywhere. Well, and this is it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.